Hi everyone, welcome back. So over the last few videos, um, especially up in the Arctic and then heading off uh, over to the uh, different islands I've been visiting lately, um, I've been asked quite a few questions as to what do I take with me and where do I put it. So this video has been sort of in the making for quite a while now um, and I'm preparing to go out uh, this weekend uh, and have an overnight somewhere so what I normally do is uh, before I uh, set off I usually get all my stuff out of my yellow dry bag and I lay it all out and just remind myself what I'm taking uh, and whereabouts it is so this video really is about looking through what I'm taking and then putting it in the bag uh, and preparing uh, to get out the next day. So let, let's have a look and see what we've got. Okay, so let's start with the big stuff. Um, I use these plastic 10 litre cans. Now, these 10 litre cans hold 12 litres um, comfortably with a very small air gap at the top. So each can it's got 12 litres in it. They sit on my back seat. So I've got 24 litres sat on my back seat. Uh, and when they're on my back seat, they form a platform for my bag to sit on. This is my dry bag. This is a, I think it's a 50 litre Lomu dry bag. So, loads of room in here okay so next is my tent now I like a big tent this is a three-man Kyam Highlander it's kind of a pop-up tent um, well, it's not really pop-up it's more of a quick erect tent um, and that fits in the bag so it pretty much fits end to end in the bag uh, it's not tight but there's loads of room on the side so I keep it up to one side of the bag so what's next now the next thing to go in uh, is my sleeping bag so my sleeping bag I use this all year round uh, it's a four season 600 fill power down sleeping bag and it's a Leviathan EV. Now at the minute it's in its storage sack and um, it packs it down a lot smaller than that. So I'll do that now. So here's the storage, here's the compression sack. And this is a Sea to Summit waterproof compression sack. So this can get wet and apparently the lads that do the sort of kayaking, uh, going off in the kayaks with a tent and a sleeping bag in the front of the kayak, use these because they're actually waterproof. So let's get it in the let's get it in the uh, compression sack. roll top on it like you get with most dry bags she got it like that 
clip it up. It's only halfway. So then. Start to pull these straps down evenly. So I'll sort of work around it. A little bit of time. There you go. That's about it. So, this is the old sack, so you can see it makes a big difference getting it in its compression sack. You can see, that's in the bag there. Still got loads of room. So, what's next? This is a foil mat. I always throw this out from the bottom of the tent. Uh, that's how wide it is. So I always put this uh, on, on the bottom. And then I'll put my sleeping mat on top of this. that and let's put it in the bag still loads of room okay so this is my it's a new addition this is I've had quite a lot of trouble with sleeping mats um, but this is a big Agnes Rapid SL it's an insulated sleeping mat. Um, so, so far so good with that. But as you can see, packs down really small. Let's put it in the bag. So, next then is my Trekology chair. Just have a quick look at it. Basically a load of poles. That makes the frame. And then that fits over the frame. As you see. So it's starting to fill up, but we've still got loads of room. This is a microfiber towel. Um, got this from Mountain Warehouse. And uh, so it don't take a lot of room. I have got a smaller one, uh, but 
it's not a lot of use to be honest. So let's put that in the bag. Okay, let's have a look at the stove. This is a Swiss Army stove and this is a Tranger meths burner and that fits in like that and uh, if if I'm using it with a frying pan I put this aluminium plate on the top and I put the stove on top like that I've then got these couple of bits of axle blade and they fit on there like so and then my little frying pan sits on the top and the heat's very close to the pan you get a lot more heat in the pan for if you're cooking steaks and stuff like that so this is the biggest pan and all this fits inside so it all fits together quite nicely I've got a lighter, I've got a striker for if I get stuck, if the lighter gets wet or anything's wet this will still strike, that goes in there as well, the hacksaw blades go in, I've got a knife and spoon and fork set goes in and then this is a small pan and this yeah got all in the end so that actually goes in one of the in the right hand pannier on the aircraft so but so I don't forget it, we'll put it in the bag. So next, got me titanium mug. You can put that on the stove if you want to. I haven't. Um, I usually boil water and that in the pan. Nice and lightweight. You can put stuff inside it if you want to. Let's put it in the bag. Okay. This is me. C to summit inflatable pillow. Let's put that in the bag. This is my flex tail kit. So in here got a little pump. I'll blow my air mat up with. And it's also a light. So long press, it's a light that hangs up in the middle of my tent like that. Switch that off and then there you go. That's my flex tail pump. And that pumps up by sleeping mat and my pillow uh, or 
I resist blowing them up with my mouth because uh, that introduces moisture in there and then you can get bacteria. So let's put that in the bag. This is my, uh, my GoPro box that the GoPro came with. I've got a few bits and pieces in here. I've got my flex tail, bug repeller, and it's also a, um, uh, a battery sort of uh, bank as well. And then I've got a few, a few memory cards and stuff. I've got a spare um, cigarette sort of power supply. I've got one of these little lights it fits in here, uh, that's quite handy, runs for hours, that goes in there, this is a little little power bank, uh, I made this, I 3D printed this, it fits in there, that sticks on the back of my seat with velcro and I've got a charge station on the back of my seat where I can charge things while I'm in flight. So they will go in there, and also that goes in there, I've got a head torch, great bit of kit, so that goes in there as well, let's put that in the bag. So. Here we've got a tyre inflator. And it's also a power bank. So that screws in there, pump the tyres up, set the pressure on here, pump the tyres up. Um, hopefully I never had to use it to pump the tyres up. That'd be good, wouldn't it? But um, I take it with me. So we'll put that in the bag. Water bottle. I think that's half a half a litre, I'm not sure. But uh, let's put that in the bag. I've got a spare radio. The problem with the radio, I can unplug the radio on the aircraft and put this one straight in. Um, head net, the midges up in Scotland. Yeah, that's needed. I've got a bit of spare uh, double sided Velcro tape. So, what we've got in this one. Um, bushcraft knife. Wood sharp knife. Now, I think that's an essential bit of kit. Actually got a bit of rust going on there, I'm gonna clean that off. This one, all going here. baby wipes. Yeah. Let's put them in the bag. Got a plate, plastic plate. It's in the bag. What's these? These are the remnants of. Um, sort of ration food, army ration packs. So most of the stuff's been eaten, there's a few bits and pieces in here that just sort of come with me. There's tea, tissues, some matches, there's a little stove there, there's a spoon, that is uh, sugar, and that is a chocolate 
fruit powder drink to rehydrate. And then in this one, I've got I've got an emergency foil blanket, and I've got a load of Nescafe sort of latte type drinks. Um, so I can make myself so as I can make myself a drink. Put them in the bag. As you can see the bag's getting pretty full now. And my frying pan. Let's put that in there. So once that's all in, and bear in mind some of these bits and pieces do come out and they go in the panniers on the aircraft. Roll this down. Go. Put the top one on. Put that one on. And I usually turn that a few turns. Clip aside. Turn that a few turns. Clip the side. ready to go so that's the bag all packed so we'll get ourselves up the air up, uh, up the airfield now and um, we'll put it on the aircraft I can show you where it all goes um, and then I can give you a look around the aircraft and uh, and show you where all the bits and pieces are and what they do okay so let's have a look at uh, how we pack uh, the equipment uh, ready for flying. So these cans fit on the seat, just right there. Like that. that forms a bit of a platform then for the bag to go on. So the bag goes on top like that. And then we just use the seat belt straps to secure everything. So we just tighten everything down. Through the handles. Tighten that up. Tighten these up. And there you go. Job done. It don't get any easier than that, I don't think. It comes up nicely. If you're using jerry cans, if you use two jerry cans side by side, you have to take the seat off, the seat post off. And then fits spot on. Excellent. Okay, let's have a look around the aircraft then. Uh, I've had a lot of questions uh, comment in the comments on the on the YouTube asking me uh, about my aircraft and what certain instruments are and um, what I've got on board and, and what things do. So let, let's have a quick look. So just walking around, here's where it all happens. This is a Rotax 
912 ULS. It's uh, 1350cc and it makes 100 horsepower. Uh, it's got twin ignition, it's got two, pots, two spark plugs per cylinder. Uh, so you could have an ignition fail in the air uh, and you probably wouldn't even know about it um, because it would be running on the, on the other ignition. So that's a good feature of the engine. It's also very compact uh, and very light for, for what it does. And also it is a dedicated aero engine. It's not an engine out of a car or out of a motorbike or out of anything else. It is a dedicated aircraft engine. So let's have a look in the cockpit. So switch the master ignition on and let's uh, let's work along so this instrument here is my MGL blaze fuel monitor and it tells me what I'm burning per hour liters per hour and that's uh, in flight so that tells me what I'm burning when I'm taking off what I'm burning in the cruise and also what I'm burning on descent and ticking over warming up. This is litres remaining in the tank so I've got 35 litres remaining in the tank and it also gives you a little indicator here. Um, these features I don't use that's for when you've got a GPS connected up to it uh, and it'll tell you how much time and how much distance you've got left um, at the fuel burn rate that you're doing at the moment. So this is a standard compass. This is obviously my phone. Um, we run Sky Demon app on this phone. Absolutely brilliant app. Um, you know. If we're doing any sort of trip now, I really wouldn't want to go without it. Uh, it's that important. I also have a tablet here that also runs Sky Demon on it. And I generally I use use it as a backup. I use my phone as the primary. I use the tablet as a backup. Um, so if one or the other goes down for any reason stops working, runs out of power, whatever. Um, I've got another one that's already there working. I'll just switch straight to it. This is my trim indicator. So with the GTR, we've got a sort of trim speed of, of about between 65 mile an hour and about 95 mile an hour. Um, Generally, I cruise at 80 mile an hour. Um, I set this up for takeoff and then I trim it for 80 mile an hour once I'm in the air. Not that accurate, that's not. I do it more by feel, to be honest. This is my airspeed indicator. So, I normally cruise at 80 mile an hour. Um, Sometimes, if it's particularly calm weather, I might trim it back to sort of 70 coming into land. But I generally keep it at 80 uh, and any adjustments I, I make, I do it with the bar directly. Maximum speed is 120 miles an hour. Uh, it will do 100 mile an hour straight and level, uh, but you're flat out and then when you flat out this is showing about 24 litres an hour so it burns some fuel um, if, if you're running flat out in the cruise it's doing sort of I don't know 13 14 litres an hour at 80 mile an hour 
So if I set it back to sort of 65, 70, it's actually down to sort of nine and a half, 10 liters an hour. So very efficient if you're flying it slow, but that's, that's my go-to speed. This is my ascent rate indicator. So that shows whether I'm climbing or whether I'm descending, or whether I'm flying level. Um, so if I'm climbing and I'm climbing at a thousand feet per minute, the needle will be here. So on my own, with say half a tank of fuel, um, this, this aircraft will do 1500 feet a minute climb rate. Um, with a passenger, and full tank of fuel, we're probably looking somewhere between 1000 and 1200 feet per minute. Uh, this is the altimeter, my altimeter, and this is variable. So here at this particular airfield, the atmospheric pressure is 1019 hectopascals. This is my fuel gauge. It is accurate. Well, it's very accurate. But this is what I look at because this, I've calibrated it myself. It took me a long time to do it and get it accurate. And I trust it. Great bit of kit. This is my outside temperature gauge. It actually needs a new battery in it. So uh, that's not working at the minute. This lead here plugs into my phone, keeps it charged. These switches here, um, strobe lights on the wingtips, nav lights on the wingtips. So nav lights, uh, red light on the left on the on the port side, green light on the right on the starboard side, and this is my landing light. This is my transponder. So that is putting out a signal that is uh, that can be picked up by air traffic control, and um, it'll tell them who I am and what altitude I, I'm at, and uh, and also. Um, they can give you a code so you can change where it says 7000 here they can give you a code so you enter the code and that shows you as a different aircraft to everybody else just keeps it all a bit sort of um, identifiable uh, but generally that will be on 7000 which is the code for VFR flight this is me fly dat so when the engine's running that's been revs. This is the hours the aircraft's done, and it's not 2,179. It's it's actually 1,217.9. This is the um, exhaust gas temperature reading. So obviously the engine's not running at the minute. Uh, but that is showing they're both the see this arrow it keeps switching left to right so when it's on the left it is showing the two cylinders on the left and when it's on the right it's gone back to the left now it's showing the two cylinders on the right this is your cylinder head temperature uh, which is basically your water temperature as well um, this is your oil temperature and this is your oil pressure. The engine is not running, so it's sitting at naught. So that's me fly dat. Here's me radio. Um, all plumbed in. Uh, integrated into me helmet through a um, intercom system. I've got a backup on this where if the intercom was to go down in flight, I unscrew these, take that out, put this one in, 
and then I plug me into com and can't find it now. There it is. No, it's not. Bill is a backup, that is. So there you go. That's the cockpit. So we're back in the back garden now. Um, I hope that's answered a few questions uh, that you might have had uh, in your mind. If there's anything else you want to know, uh, feel free to uh, ask, ask away in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please give us a like and subscribe. See you next time.